All right, so the first thing we want to do is create our dedicated server directory. And in there, we want to create a Steam CMD directory. And then you want to download Steam CMD. I have that description, uh, the link in the description. I have the description in the description too. You're going to run that, just double click it. It'll install all the files you need. Once that's done, we're going to create a forest updater file. And I have that in the description as well. And this will install of all of our server uh, directories and things that we need for the server. So once you've created that, go ahead and run that file, run your updater file or install file. That'll install all of our server uh, directories and everything we need to run the server. Now, once that is done, we're going to run our dedicated server exe that's in our dedicated server directory now. That is going to pull up a end night black window, and you'll say it'll say end night, and it won't show anything after that. Now, sometimes when I've installed this, I have gotten a second window that shows me all the processes and all the steps and confirms all the information for the server. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it don't, and I couldn't figure out why or how to continuously replicate it. I let this run for 30, 45 seconds, and then I close the window. And once we close the window, we're ready to configure our server. Now we want to configure our server, and we need to turn on show hidden files and directories go into users and whatever you're using to log into your server go into that profile under users go into app data local low sks and forest uh, dedicated server folder ds and right click now this is the same directory path as if you had installed your steam through Steam client and through your tools and all that. So make sure you change your server to the local IP address and the ports you want to use. I use 22 and 23 because I have a whole range of ports that, and you can use any port you like as long as it matches your firewall and it's an open port. I'm going to change the name to something I can identify, something uh, I can easily filter all through all the servers that are on. Now I'm late to this game. I've had it for years, but I've never played it. My favorite gaming channel plays it. So I just wanted to play it. And then, it, so when I started looking at how to set up a dedicated server, this is what I found. So I put in a password um, so I can validate server connection. Yeah, you don't have to. I would keep, you know, other randos off your server so you don't have uh, people mucking around and, and uh, messing things up for you. And the set server settings, they're all the same as if you had loaded this as the dedicated server on your gaming machine through the Steam client. Um, I do turn creative mode on. I do, we do, I technically cheat, I guess, um, because we like to build stupid build, big things, and it, it, to me that's fun. That's part of, part of one of the reasons I, I love these survival games so much is, is the building aspect. I, and it kills me that this has a vegan and a vegetarian mode. That To me, that is hilarious, considering we're talking about cannibals, the irony. Um, I ch don't change anything here. I do like, to, like for it to regrow trees. Building destruction, I leave default. Most of these I leave default, except creative mode, I do like uh, enemies during creative mode because even if we're cheating it's still got to fight allow cheats I turn on because we will mod it and we will cheat so we have rules to cheating so just FYI <laughs> and I uh, leave everything else default and once that's done uh, oh save directory that's the thing I forgot save directory I, I just create a save directory in the dedicated server folder and just go ahead and uh, go home and new put in a new folder there and I just call it saves and then double click that folder or directory whatever you want to call it and copy the path to the saves and just paste it in there put in a space and then paste that path in there and then I have back-end scripts that I run 
that collects all those saves and puts them outside the directory into a backup file that I've created. I don't mess with the FPS, I leave it the same and save that file and we are ready to go back into our dedicated server folder and run the dedicated server. Now this process is no different than running it through Steam. I just create a shortcut on the desktop and start it from there. Now once this window comes up, just like with um, running it through your Steam client, you're going to get the uh, little stomach icon, um, food and hunger icon, that kind of stuff. Now usually when this comes up I give it 35-40 seconds and then we're going to go into and connect to our server. So I tried to connect via the server list in Steam. Um, I try, I put it in there and you could see that it, it gives me the, the server and the server's there. So you try to connect to it. I try, it won't let me put it in the server list. Uh, in my favorites, it wouldn't allow. For some reason, it wouldn't just. It wouldn't go in there. So I try to connect to it, and you see that it it operates as if it's going to start and connect to the server. It starts connecting client, and then just sits there for a very very long time. I never got it to connect. It's, you know, 20 minutes or so later, and I'm bored. So I'm going to show you how to connect via the game. So having failed trying to start through the Steam interface, I used, just started the game and was going to join the multiplayer game that way and was quite successful. Even And I learned something very interesting as to why it does or doesn't work. So I join multiplayer, join a game, and it'll list, you go to dedicated internet, which is, I'll explain in a minute why it uses dedicated internet instead of dedicated LAN, like if you put it on your gaming machine through your Steam client. So once this list refreshes, I could scroll down almost 100% of the time and find my server there. And I can also find it by filter by name, which was much easier. So when your friends want to join, once you've set this dedicated server up, your friends may want to join. It's easier if they just filter by name, give your, again, give your machine a very unique name so that it can be found. Because there's some wonderful names of servers on there, uh, crotch goblins and um, maple flavored twat or something else. <laughs> it was awesome. But you can find it every single time this way. Now I tried using dedicated LAN. Um, it doesn't show up, which I, I n after doing it I understand why. Because you would think it would work because it's on the same network, but it's not. It's not in peer to peer. It's you can't join favorites I, through the Steam interface. I couldn't get it in favorites. So, but what it seems to do, and you'll you'll see here in a second, what it seems to do is when you install this as a dedicated server it thinks it is sitting out on the internet somewhere and looks for the external IP address of, of your external IP address and you'll see there there's my external IP address and the port that I set now it's a pretty quick ping for 12 milliseconds but this dedicated server install thinks it's a, a dedicated hosted server sitting out on the internet somewhere. So it needs an external IP address. That's why you can't see it on your dedicated LAN. So you put in your password and again password's a great way to verify that you're actually getting into your server and that communication is good. And you'll see here that it is. It joins the game. I, I played for a couple hours. I, it ran fine. Uh, I ran this uh, test on a server that was also running ARC and uh, it had a couple people connected playing. I 
understand why this does this now, but I don't understand why nobody's ever done this before, and I don't understand why this particular video seems like it's lagging. I never had any lag the whole time I played, and I apologize for this. I, I don't understand why it doing this, but I played for a couple hours, no problem. Uh, created a hut so I could a little lean to thing so I could save the game. It saved. I reconnected to it. It kept me where I saved. Funny thing about this game is I don't understand how the food managed to stay sitting somewhere without spilling all over the place. So you'd think you would be picking the pieces of meat up off the back of the chairs, but but this works as a dedicated standalone dedicated server that you and your friends can join without having to run it through your game machine on a machine that you can leave sitting up 24 hours 7. I know my friends, we all different coasts, we're all across the country and we work different schedules. So we can leave a server on and we can all get on at any time that we want and play. So have fun. You have a forest dedicated server. You're welcome. Have a good night. <laughs>